Good evening. Welcome to our third uh, online prayer meeting. And I'm sure uh, that you've been blessed, you've been reminded by our daily devotions. No? So we've been sending devotions uh, every day. And I also hope that you are doing your uh, family worship on Sundays, wherein we, we gather as a family and I worship together. No? So we give materials also on our uh, Facebook uh, website of uh, the church. So tonight, uh, I'm sure for, we are on the third week, I think. Yeah, we're on the third week now that we are quarantined, we are locked down. And if you notice something on my face, uh, this is what they call uh, the quarantine glow. Yeah. So, nagaputi <laughs> ako. And if you also notice on uh, your uh, families, your siblings at home, that they're growing bigger, that's what you call lockdown bodies. No? Na, nagadako na sila because they've been eating all the supplies. <laughs> so, tonight, let me ask you something. What's in your heart? How are you? So what's in your heart? Are you worried? Are you anxious? Or uh, maybe you're having a hard time? Or you're thinking of what to eat next month? Or maybe next week, no? So that's something that is real. That's really real. Maybe others are indifferent. Or maybe for some, like me, uh, wala pa nag-sync. Get totally uh, everything. It feels surreal. And every time that I wake up, it feels like I'm watching a movie. <laughs> now, so what's happening? It's, it feels like for me, it's just in a movie. But I'm sure a lot of us are worried. A lot of us are thinking of our families, our work. Now. And uh, tonight would be something to, uh, I hope, to something to encourage us. I've watched a movie uh, called Angel Has Fallen. And uh, they had a crisis. Now, there were betrayal, there were attacks, and... One of the h- toughest times of uh, that movie, and I heard the president uh, in that movie mention that it's our moments of struggle that define us, and how we handle them is what matters. And I just want to deposit that in your heart also, no? that uh, it is in our moments of struggle, uh, this is the moment that uh, actually define us, and how we manage, how we handle them, really matters. No? And uh, people would say that uh, money or crisis would change us. But actually, crisis uh, doesn't change us. No? It doesn't change us. It only magnifies what we are made of. So tonight, you know, tonight we're going to move from worry to worship. Okay, that's our goal. We're going to move from trusting ourselves to trusting God. No? But the question is, how we do it? How do we do that? How do we move from, from panicking to praying? How do we do that? How do we turn our problems into praises, you know, and turn our trials to testimonies? You know, the answer is, in one word, is peace, peace, and we all need that peace, and that peace is actually coming from. The Lord. Now allow me to read in John 14, verse 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you uh, what the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. It is a comforting words from our Lord Jesus Christ when the disciples were worried about what's going to happen after Christ is leaving them. They're uncertain of what is to come, no? and they don't know what tomorrow would bring them. And I think we can relate to that. We can relate to that. No? But the promise is, like what Christ said, peace I am leaving you, and I give you peace. We need this peace. No? And the source of peace is not found in a pill or a medicine. Now You cannot buy medicine uh, that would give you peace. There's no such thing. Source of peace is not also found in programs, especially these days. Uh, there's no church services. There, we don't have physical prayer meetings. You have no Bible studies. There's, not, there's no program to make. No? So it's also not a source of peace. 
Also, peace is not found only on principles. The things that we read, we have a lot of time. We read, but principles alone, actually, they don't give us peace. But what's the source of peace? It's found in one person, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And tonight, I just want to encourage everyone that peace no, can be attained. And this peace is coming from our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom we always neglect. We always say that we don't have time. We're busy. And we always say, Lord, we would make time uh, on summer, maybe for students. Or for a businessman, we would say, now if business is good, then we would make time. You know? Or for, for ministers, we would say, if I'm not preaching, if I'm not assigned this week, then I would make time. We have a lot of excuses. But actually, time is spelled as H-E-A-R-T. If we, we don't have the heart to do it, if we don't have the heart for that, then we won't make time. But you know, in a ironic, the Lord granted us that. I'm sure we all have the desire to make time. We all have desire to really saturate ourselves with the Lord so that we would have that peace. And the Lord granted us. We have so much time. That's what we have today. Now, these days, we have so much time. And we have to maximize it. So allow me to read a passage in the Bible wherein we could learn uh, five Ps. Five Ps. Okay, letter P. Five Ps of attaining peace. And this is found in Philippians chapter 4. So please open your Bibles. And let's read Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. So Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. I can feel that you're still opening your Bible, so I will wait for you. And you are also opening your gadgets, so I'll wait for you. So it's in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 9. This is a familiar passage. But from this passage, we're going to extract five principles for us to actually be on the right track of having this peace from the Lord. Because this peace is a gift. No? This is a gift. You cannot just attain it on your own. But the Lord gave us uh, instructions, guidance, into receiving this gift from Him. So Philippians 4, verses 6 to 9, allow me to read it in a New Living Translation. It says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the, the God of peace will be with you. Very beautiful passage. So first, first P of the five P's unto the road of peace. So first, first P is pause. It's pause. It's counterproductive, no? but it's pause. We always ask ourselves, what do we do in times like this? What do we do? But the Bible started with don't. Now, interesting. Now, what do we do? The answer is don't. What do we do? But the Bible says don't. So allow me to proceed. The Bible says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. I did not say that. The Bible says that. Don't, don't do anything. Don't worry about anything. So when we ask ourselves, what should we do? The first thing to do is you pause. And don't worry about anything. Now is a good day, good time to pause no? because we have so much time. We have so much time to reflect, to think about the things that we've done wrong, the things that we, you know, we misprioritize. We have to pause. 
and to stop worrying. So pause. Second is pray. So after saying, don't worry about anything, but instead you pray about everything. So after pausing, the next thing to do is to pray. Okay, so don't worry about anything, but instead we pray. So it says here, we pray about everything. Telling God what you need because the Lord cares. The Lord listens. So you pause, then you pray. It says, someone says that if you pray more, you worry less. If you worry more, then you pray less. You cannot worry and worship at the same time. It doesn't happen that way. So for us to worship, to live a life of worship, we need to stop worrying and to pray. To tell God what we need. One of my mentors shared to me that what he learned from his devotions is to turn his thoughts into conversations with God. To tell God what we need. To tell God what we worry. To tell God why we're anxious and what we're anxious about. To tell God about everything. Instead of worrying, just tell the Lord what's in your mind. No? Tell God what's in your mind. Third P, so pause, pray. And the third P is praise. So the, the scripture says, don't worry about anything, so pause. Instead, pray about everything, so pray. Then he said, and thank him for all he has done. So you pause, you pray, then you praise God. And I think that's what we forget. We forget that we are blessed. We forget that there's so many things to be thankful for. There's so many things to, to thank God for. So we could start by writing them. We could start by writing three things that we are thankful for. No? And we start our day and maybe also end our day with thanksgiving. So it says there, thank God for all he has done. All he has done. And I'm sure the Lord has really been good to us. We just don't see it because we see the problems more. So we have to pause, then pray. So you turn your thoughts into conversations. Then you praise God. No? Praise God. And we have so much time. We would always say, na, uh, can you give us five things that you are thankful for? No? Sa mga prayer meeting, di ba? We, we ask, oh, give three things, share three things, share five things. And now you have the whole day. Now write them and then you would realize that there's so many things to be thankful for. So many things. And that is also healthy for your brain. No? We had that uh, workshop about keeping our brains healthy. No? And one, one of the key to that is to, to be thankful. No? To be thankful. So, pause, pray, then praise. The fourth one is you process. No? You process. Allow me to read... And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So, we think about all these good things. We process them. We think about them. So, how do we do this? We spend more time with the Lord. We spend more time with His Word. We spend more time in solitude and listening to God and process what we have read from His Word. Think about such things. Joshua, in one of our devotions, it was mentioned to, to meditate on God's Word. How can you meditate on something that you do not know? How can you meditate on something that you have not read? So, I think it's good, no? It's really good to spend a lot of time reading God's Word so that you have something to process. You have something to think about. Then it would reshape your mind. And as if your mind has been reshaped, it would actually reshape your lives. So because the Bible is uh, identity formation, it slowly changes you. It speaks to you. So when you process these things, 
it would help you. It would really help you. So don't just read, spend devotion for the sake of spending time, but really process what you have read. Think about them. How does this apply to my life now? You ask, Lord, what, is, what are you depositing in my heart today? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to respond? Process them. Process them. So, what are the things that you need to process? What is true? No? So, instead of uh, magchismis, you know, malibak, you know, we backbite people, we think low of other people, why don't we think of good things? Why don't we lift each other up in prayer? Why don't we think about the welfare of other people? Think about good things, what we have learned from each other. Think about what is true, what is honorable, what is right, what is pure. So by thinking what is pure, we need to get rid of what is not pure or impure. So we need to guard ourselves also because we have so much time. And an idle mind is the workshop of the devil. So we need to maximize our day. We need to maximize our time. So write your schedule, your to-do to do list, your stop doing list, so that you can do your to-do list. Then you process your thoughts. What else? You think about lovely things, admirable things. So kung magtanaw mo, okay, drama, because they're admirable, ah, pwede siguro. But not too much, no? You can watch movies together as a family and process it. No? Uh, I always have a habit of uh, watching critically of all the movies that I watch. So I would ask myself, why is the title of this movie this one? Or what do I glean from this movie? What's my takeaway? No? And now, because you are at home with your family, you can talk about the families. What are the wrong values taught in the movie? What are the good ones? No? What, are, what can we take away from the movie? No? Think about such things that are admirable and lovely no? and pure. Think about things that are excellent. Now, how do we improve ourselves? How do we <clears throat> develop on areas that are weak? We have so much time. Now, so the things that are excellent and worthy of praise, no, it's developing our character. And again, we have so much time. I keep repeating that. We have so much time. It's a gift from the Lord. We have so much time. So we need to pause. What do we need to do? First, we don't. We don't worry. We need to pause. Second is we pray. No, we pray instead of worrying. Then we thank the Lord. We praise. No, so pause, pray, and praise. Then we process. We fix our thoughts on Christ, on Jesus Christ and whatever is true, noble, admirable, lovely, excellent, whatever is praiseworthy. Lastly, is we practice. No, it says here. Keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from the word of the Lord. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received. So it's progressive, meaning you don't stop. They would always say that learning is a continuous process. It's true. But learning, how would you know that you're really learning? Learning is best seen in how we are transformed. Meaning, if we are practicing it, then we are learning. If we're not practicing, then we're not learning. No? So, the last P is practice. Keep putting into practice all. So, don't just read. Don't just spend time. Don't just process. Don't just write Thanksgiving. But put them into practice. Leave them out. So, how do we do that? So, if the Lord deposits something in your heart this morning, then you pray about it. Because you've laid down all your worries, then you praise the Lord, then you process your thoughts, process the things that God deposited in your heart. Then you ask yourself, how will I put this into practice? How can I live this out? Huh? That's what discipleship is. We follow Jesus. No? And following Jesus is putting into practice, living out all the principles that Jesus taught in the Bible because he himself also lived them out and as a follower of Jesus we also follow what he does put them into practice okay so five peace so that we will have peace okay pause pray praise 
process and practice. And the last part in the verse, it says, then the God of peace will be with you. Then the God of peace will be with you. No? Because peace is a gift from God. But we need to pause. We need to pray. We need to process. Okay? We need to praise. And we need to practice. So, let us uh, strive for consistency, more than intensity. No? Uh, the little things. The little things. Now, we start with little things. Then we put them into practice. Someone has said that if you sow an act, you reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you reap a character. If you sow a character, you reap your destiny. And the Lord has given us the gift of time. No, wala na tayo excuse. Wala na tayo time. So let's make use of our time. And grab hold of that peace coming from the Lord. Because that is the only thing now that even the world could not understand. And the world could not grab from us. Peace. And to attain that peace, we need to pause, pray. We need to process. Okay, We need to praise God. And we need to practice that. So, we're going to spend more time in prayer. So, I'll be praying. And after this, uh, the prayer items will be shown uh, in this video. And let's spend a lot of time in praying. Not only for ourselves, but for other families, for other people, and for other countries. No? Maybe for some, you're indifferent. You just don't care. You care only about yourselves. I think this is the time to care for others. That's why we have this prayer time. So, uh, allow me to pray. Let's uh, spend time in prayer. And uh, allow me to close this part in prayer. Father, we thank you because you are the God who gives us peace. And this peace is coming from not of this world, but only from you. Father, we pray that in these difficult times, you would give us the the strength to stop, to pause, to not worry, to let go of our worries because we are not God and to surrender them to you. Because you've said that we are to cast all our anxieties on you because you care for us. Allow us to pause and to spend more time in conversing with you in prayer, to turning our thoughts into conversations. And also allow us, Lord, to praise you. Remind us of the many things that we can be thankful for. And Lord, I also pray that we could process the things that we've been learning from your word, from each other. Process them so that we could put them into practice. I pray, Lord, that as a church, we can give more. We can be the church to our neighbors, to our society, our city. And this is the time, Lord, that we can be Christ-like to them. And I pray that you would steer our hearts. I pray, Lord, for all the church members, for the leaders, the pastoral team, the board, the lay leaders, and all the families in the church, Lord. Steer our hearts, Lord, to doing extra miles for you. Because this is the time to really extend and overflow your love on people around us. Empower us, Lord, and strengthen us as one church. I pray that your loving mercy would intervene in these difficult times. And I pray, Lord, if you are willing, I pray, Lord, that you would remove this crisis and allow us to realize that you are sovereign in all this. Thank you, Lord, for meeting our hearts together, for uniting us in one as we pray together. Be with us, Lord. Continually provide uh, for each family. Continually protect the families. And continually, Lord, continually give us the peace that we need. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.